Hello everybody. Um, I, in this video, I kind of wanted to show you how you can export uh, Rhino and Grasshopper plugins from the script that you write in the new Rhino 8 script editor inside of the script editor or the sort of like the standalone one or the one that you can use in Grasshopper with the scripting components. Um, this is meant to be a very quick introductory to this. I, I could just want you uh, to get started on this and sort of like start filing bug reports. Um, obviously, we're going to make nicer tutorial videos later. Um, to get started, I'm going to go to File menu, hit Create Project, and I'm going to go to this uh, folder that I've prepared. I'm going to mark, uh, sort of like name this project as Test Project at the bottom. And notice that at the bottom, the extension for the file is RH Project. That's how they're going to be saved from now on. I'm going to save this. It's going to give me a prompt to put the project information in there. It gives me the ID that you can now change. Test, Description, uh, let's put some version in here, Major, Minor, Patch. And I can mark it as pre-release. And let's do copyright. You can change it as much as you want. Um, something like that. And MIT for the license. And you can put the project URL in here. One of the other things that you can do is that you can actually assign an icon to this. So I'm going to go to icons. And uh, maybe, I don't know, heart. What is the icon? And those are SVG files that are being stored in there. So, you know, it... it whichever in the future, whatever screen resolution that Rhino is on, it'd be nicely generated from the SVG. You can actually assign a dark icon in here too for the dark mode, but uh, legacy Rhino plugins don't really support the dark icon. So in the, in the interface, we don't have a way of actually showing that right now. But the light icon will show. We'll basically just use the light icon for the dark icon at the moment. So I'm going to hit save. Uh, you are presented with four different directories in this panel that's called the project panel, right, or the plugin panel. Um, it's kind of different from the Explorer and the templates and sort of like examples. It shows up here when you open a project, and you can actually open the project from now on using the open project menu uh, in here. I'm going to right-click on the command and say add a grasshopper script as a Rhino command. I'm going to go here. Change my uh, grasshopper to grasshopper XML. I have filed, uh, created this grasshopper definition. It's called add numbers. And all it does is that it gets two numbers using the uh, context aware uh, sort of like components. It uses another scripting component in here, the, the modern scripting component in here, to take those values and sort of like print the results on the output. And that gets sort of like added there. If you want to change and override the command, you can actually do it from here. I can assign icons to it. So I'm going to go import uh, icons, add light. I'm not going to do the dark icons right now, but you get the point that the other one is the dark icon. You can exclude this from the build if you want to. You can assign the type of the command that this is, and it tells you that target is grasshopper one, meaning that the actual language that will run that command would be the grasshopper one language engine, right? Um, I'm going to right click on this and add a C-sharp command from the test that I have. And it opens the file, very simple to use C-sharp file. It's, called, it's going to get called my C-sharp command. You can, again, change that, assign an icon, all that kind of stuff to it. Right-click, add Python, add a Python command, very simple Python command, Python 3, not too complicated. And that's pretty much it. I'm going to hit the save in here, or you can go from the file save project to sort of like save your project. Um, the other thing that you can do is that you can right-click on the components and add a grasshopper definition as a source for the components that you want to publish, right? So let's say I'm going to go add this make sphere in here. In this grasshopper definition, I have a C-sharp scripted component that has a series of inputs and a sphere as an output. It does something very silly. It's just something that I've sort of like, you know, played with for a while as a test command. But it basically does, it creates a script and it's a sphere and it draws some arrows and shows a message on the Rhino display, right? So it's very simple, um, simple, uh, component. You can see that file shown in here. If you open that, it'll give you the sort of like a default panel. And if you open that, it will show you this grasshopper definition, the uh, scripted component in here that you have as a component that you can publish inside your plugin. I can change the name of this and call it make sphere. The name came from sort of like the name of this in there. And uh, make sphere, and let's assign an icon to it as well. Some of these windows aren't really popping up correctly. Just get and assign a sphere to this, and uh, I'm gonna call the K 
subcategory, which would be the panels that show up in graph software as my tools. And you can actually choose which section of the panel you want this to be shown at, marked it as legacy or completely excluded from the build if you want to. I'm not going to do that right now and you can put some description and stuff like that in there too. Notice that the sort of like the category in here, the subcategory changed to my tools. So it shows you that this component is gonna go under my tools. And the same script can contain other components as well. So this uh, grasshopper definition can be basically the unit test for all these scripts, the uh, scripting components that you have that you want to share with other people. And uh, sort of like you just add that in here and it will generate the uh, plugin from that, from that definition. One of the other things that I, I just wanted to mention is that the, the latest build uh, that you're going to have, uh, when you right click on the uh, parameters, you'll have a nickname for humans and a variable name for your script. So this is what the name of the parameter is in the UI, but the actual script under it uses X as the variable name. And one of the other things that happen is that the, uh, the uh, sort of like UI, the scripting UI will not let you choose keywords. So if I do there and I run this, it'll give me the input parameter X is using reserved keyword there as a variable name. It'll be a little more lenient on Python side, but on C Sharp, it actually doesn't let you uh, sort of like run the, it will show you an error. Um, so that's it. And then input parameters have type ends, which we have add icons to them and sort of like, you know, uh, more information, more uh, data types, annotation. If you hover over them, it actually shows you what the data type is, right? So this would be a string. It shows you the icon, the name, the name of the uh, sort of like the nickname and all that kind of stuff. And on the other side, the output parameters also have a type hint. So you can actually say that this is going to be a B-rep, although I'm putting out a sphere in there, I want it to be converted to a B-rep. I want it to sort of like shoot, or a different, you know, different data type or something like that. Um, so that's it. I have that one here. I'm gonna hit save on this one. And I'm going to right click on the components again. I'm just gonna close this for simplicity. Actually, let's keep it open. Um, add Grasshopper, another one. And what I'm going to do is that add a context Grasshopper component. So this one is sort of like it might catch all kind of all the different tests, everything else in here. It has every context component that we have input and the outputs under the sun. And it has a whole bunch of sort of like di different tests and stuff like that. All it does is to show you an example of a very complex Grasshopper definition that you have that has a lot of different inputs. And I want to publish this whole Grasshopper definition as a component. Right? So if you have any context parameters inside your Grasshopper definition, the editor is going to assume that that is going to be a context component. You're going to see a different icon in here that tells you this is going to be a context aware uh, sort of like build, which means that this whole Grasshopper definition is going to turn into one component. I'm going to hit edit in here and I'm going to change its name. And notice that it already picked up the icon and description and everything else is in from the actual grasshopper definition, from the definition properties. And I'm gonna use the same my tools for this one as well. And we're gonna put this maybe on the second section of the panel. I'm gonna hit okay. So all of that is sort of like shown in here. You can add more grasshopper definition files in here or files that have more um, uh, sort of like components inside of them. And I'm gonna hit save. Now I'm gonna to go to this sort of like menu, uh, the button at the top that's publish active project, or you can go from the uh, sort of like file menu, publish project. It'll give you a, a, a sort of like a window that's very similar to the edit project. All the top part is all the project metadata that you can edit. And the build target, I'm gonna assign it for Rhino 8. It'll show you Rhino 7 builds too, but the only projects that you can build for those are the ones that use Iron Python scripts only. Because this infrastructure that we have is not available in Rhino 7, right? So it's very limited in what it can do for Rhino 7, but for Rhino 8, you will have the full features. And if you know that you have used APIs that are only available on Windows or our Mac, then you can use a very specific version of that in there. Um, obviously, you can't publish for Mac from Windows, right? Um, so I'm gonna do build passes build, and I'm gonna build a project. It will require internet because it needs to, it will be able to download NuGet packages. And if I open this, I can see that the, ooh, ooh, where did it go? Uh, the uh, project in the same directory as where the project existed, went on the build directory, Rhino8 underscore zero, and it'll put some of this information I'm only seeing because I'm in uh, debug. 
mode, so you won't be able to see anything else. You you see these. So you see the source code for the actual plugin. So if you want to make other changes to it, stuff like that, you can. But it basically generates GHAs, RHP, and RUI for your project and the ACK package with the right version and everything else, right? I'm going to close my script editor. I'm going to grab the RHP and put it inside of Rhino. Notice that the RUI will automatically get loaded. The icons are there for the one command that I added the icon. If I run it, first number and the second number, this is Grasshopper running that Grasshopper definition. That's the one that we sort of like added number to it. This is my test C sharp command, and that's my test Python command, right? So you have this toolbar that you can share, this plugin with a toolbar that you can share with everybody else or publish it to Yak. Under Grasshopper, I'm going to close everything else that I had. I'm going to go to that directory and load the GHA. Notice the test project is going to get added in it as a tab. And I have these. You can throw a make a sphere in here. And you can throw a context component. See, all those inputs that we had in that grasshopper definition are populated here. They have the correct type based on the context of that type. So if you have the geometry context and you have some filter set on it, It'll actually filter those properties and all that kind of stuff. And then your uh, grasshopper definition that was created from uh, sort of like that scripted component also had the right has the right data types and the right output type. So I'm going to put a bunch of numbers into this. And we're going to see that it does exactly, uh, oh, I need to throw a DREP in here so I can preview this. And we can see that that is there and the icons, the arrows will change size and the message is the one that shows is shown on the screen. Um, from now on, this is basically a fully fledged grasshopper component in here that has that script embedded in there and it will run that script every time you sort of like run that plugin using the whatever language runtime that's available. And this is exactly the same thing. That's a context aware component. Let me see if I can actually open my test file for this one. It probably uses the same ID. So everything should work. Yes. Uh, so notice this, uh, this is a grasshopper definition that I uh, created for my tests before. But because that component had the same ID and it was published, it automatically got replaced with this sort of like one that's that's here. Uh, well, actually, it's actually using the one that's from my already loaded plugin. Okay, anyway, they both use the same idea, I believe. Or maybe not in this case. I'm getting everybody confused. Don't worry about it. Um, but basically, that's sort of like an example of how you can actually use that Grasshopper. So um, uh, this component has a Grasshopper definition running in background, asking Grasshopper to run it, setting the inputs and reading the outputs. Now on the get, give me integer, I have set the range to negative 10 to 15, as you can see in the uh, sort of the description. And if I go beyond that, it'll show me an error. The get geometry allows a series, uh, sort of like a set of uh, geometries that it can accept. But if I, for example, throw a sphere in there, it will complain because it's not part of those uh, filter paths. So you can see that they're pretty flexible in terms of like, you know, whatever that you set on the component or the context components, it will follow down the chain into the, uh, the published Grasshopper definition. So I hope you like this and I hope uh, you start testing it and sort of like, you know, find all the bugs in there. Um, I'm really excited for this. This, I feel like it's one of the easiest ways that anybody can create scripts for Rhino and publish them as um, plugins for their own use or um, everybody else's.